a father, you are really a good, good father. It is only you, it is only you who can love us perfectly. It is only you who can love us perfectly behind our imperfections. And nothing can separate your love from us. So I thank you. Thank you because we have experienced your grace. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Impact Church. And we praise the Lord for another day of worship. And uh, my prayer is that patuloy natin marumdaman yung pagkilos ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. Continue to acknowledge His blessings, His goodness, and His faithfulness to us. And also, um, being always sensitive in the things that He wants us to, to do and accomplish for His name. And that's very important. I hope you're all well and doing good with your families at home. Please stay at home. Um, we are still in uh, community quarantine, general community quarantine. Uh, piling mga tao lang po ang pwede kumunta pa lang sa ating church. And hindi pa po pwedeng lahat. Hindi pa po pwedeng lahat ng mga nasa team pa lang po natin. Okay? So please uh, stay at home. Uh, today is June 21 and uh, uh, one night ago. and we praise the Lord for the many things that He has done for our church most especially at patuloy natin magupurihan siya sa mga mabubuting bagay no, na kanyang uh, ginagawa Gusto natin uh, matiin ang uh, mga kasama natin ngayon na, na nakalive Batin mo natin mga nakalive para tuloy-tuloy uh, <laughs> tayo mamaya sa ating announcements. You like to beat? Yes. Uh, Una-una, nagsabi na, good morning, si Art, okay, si Jun, pati si Jun, bumati ah, si Ace, ayan, uh, si Angela, si Minya, si uh, um, Gladys, si Dan, si Martina, si Sheena Marie, si uh, Kiko, Si Ati Rowena Galil, si Ati Jemel Palisok, ang sabi good morning. And happy Father's Day to all. Palisok family is watching. Ati Marian, ganun din. Mabati na good morning and happy Father's Day. Is Sir Francis, ganun din. Si Chelsea, sabi niya may kasama siya na nanonood sa atin ngayon. Si Christine Joy at saka si Princess Lou. Princess Lou. So we thank you. For uh, all of you who are watching with us right now sa ating Facebook Live. Marami po ang bumati. Kayo lahat po ay bumati ng Happy Father's Day. Father's Day. Good morning sa mga kapatid sa mga kapatid. I hope uh, na tuwa po kayo sa, ano, sa video no, na um, 
binigyan natin para sa mga tatay at saka sa tula. Tula. Ayan. Ni May. Ayan. May tula rin si May para sa mga tatay. Sino bang mga gumawa niyan? Sa multimedia team siguro yan ano? Very good. Praise the Lord for you. Bulit ka rin siya. Si Pao, ang ating uh, editor. Gumagawa ng video na yan. At syempre, konsepto yan, no? nasama-sama. At saka yung mga nagpadala ng video, eh uh, talagang natuwa ko. Kasama ako na tatay din. <laughs> okay? Uh, uh, we move on sa ating... Uh, mga announcements ngayong umaga nito. Gusto natin patiin ang mga magdiriwang ng kanilang kaanuan ngayong linggo ito. Si Ara Jean Dele. Happy birthday. Ayan. Hindi uh, po na po ni Ara. Ano <laughs> to na ba si Ara? Uh, ha? 20 na. Okay. Pangalawang, pangalawang libunan niya. Paano ito ba? <laughs> si uh, Ito Jun uh, Julio Concepcion Jr. Yan, happy yes, birthday bro. All the way to uh, May greetings namin Ako talagang palaman sa inyo dyan Ati Marian, nanonood yan Ati Marian, Ito Boy Happy, happy birthday po sa inyo At sa June 23 Ito, may matagal-tagal na natin Si Jeffrey Rambao Happy birthday, Jeff. Watching si Jeff, no? Nagising talaga siya mga yung sin. Alam niyo, babatiin natin siya. Happy birthday, Jeff. Okay, Jeff. Sana ako. Buti naman at nagising ka, please, na Lord. Wedding anniversary po ni Dr. Jason at ni Ate Donna Tam. Ayan. Dr. J, Ate Donna, happy, happy wedding anniversary po sa inyo dalawa. Wow. We need to remind you of yung ating uh, tithes and offering to the Lord. Of course, pwede niyo po ipadalayan to our video account. Account number 0001609-48665. Okay? <laughs> At meron din po nga yung mga paraan para may padalayan yung mga tithes and offering. I can transfer money through Palawan Express or si Simuana si Padala or by pick-up. We are willing to pick up your tithes and offering. Just give us a message. So, ayan po. Ang ating po recipient details is Angela Dayan Kamota. Contact number is nandiyan po sa screen. Pwede yung screen chat para ay, hindi niyo pa na yun. Pero pwede niyo balik-balikan ng our chat na lang na akong friend to si Angela. Of course, we would like to tell you na dahil hindi nga po tayo nakikita every Sunday at nanonood lang tayo ng video sa bahay natin or sa ating mga phone while we are uh, on, on the way gusto po namin na patuloy nyo lang po na isave no? kung hindi nyo po talagang walang paraan para may madala ninyo hindi to save your tithes and offering on a separate place or envelope, envelope or box or uh, alkansya o saan man yan because I know that we are separating it and saving it up kasi gusto natin ibigay sa Panginoon so i-save nyo na po because when the time comes when we meet again we will drop it together sa ating offering box okay po? and gusto nyo natin sabihin of course na we are moving the family camp 2020 to a later date and prayfully parayin natin na na umabot na this year eh this year eh makapag family camp tayo no na ang matapos na kagad ang COVID magkaroon kagad ng vaccine no so that pwede na ulit mag camp magsama-sama tayo okay and for our official impact shirt syempre kasama yun sa anniversary natin gusto namin na sabihin sa inyo na lahat po ng impact church members and Impact Church attendees uh, will have the privilege to have our Impact shirt. At yan po, nakita niyo yung magandang design na yan. Kakaroon po yan yan. Ang gagawin nila po, i-message po si Mom Angela. Yan, na inyong t-shirt size. Okay? So, huwag niyo pong uh, malimutan para maipagawa uh, na po, mapareserve na po 
yung inyong mga t-shirts. Kaya hindi po yung mga mask, meron din po mga uh, uh, libreng mask. No? May t-shirt ka lang, may mask pa pa. Ayan. Uh, libreng libre rin po. Just message. Talaga, magpa-flag talaga ng message si Ma'am Angela. Dahil <laughs> maraming mga message sa kanya. Uh, order no, ng kanilang uh, sizes. Yung mask, wala na kung size, mga size fit so. Or sabihin nila kung pang bata or pang adult. Meron po tayong dalawang size pa rin yan. Okay? Sige po. That is uh, all of our announcement this morning. But uh, this morning, gusto ko natin uh, sabihin na pala na ang lahat po ng tatay ay makakatanggap. Yan. Yeah, no? Yung mga kapos natin. <laughs> makakatanggap po ng regalo from Impact Church! Happy Father's Day! Hindi po ito why. Ito po ay green tea juice. Tapasar po natin mga muna po ito. Concentrated po ito. Kaya marami po matitimpla. Tama-tama pa sa mga Father's Day. Okay? We will let you know how you can ano Para, para naman yung papadala sa ninyo, just uh, contact us din kung papaan kung may alam kayo. But you, you have to wait po, but uh, we will make a way. Yeah. God will make a way. <laughs> we won't care. And then, um, ngayong umaga, kung uh, tayo siya offering, nasa envelope. So, uh, we're giving it first to the Lord para sa gawain ng Panginoon at first para sa Kanya. Dahil patuloy ang Kanyang pagpapala sa akin. Praise the Lord. Can we just, uh, can I, I just lead you in a prayer, no? Pag-pray natin ating uh, tithes and offering to the Lord. Habang nandiyan kayo sa inyong mga bahay, uh, pwede kayo kumuha ng isang lalagyan, no? kung marami kayo sa isang pamilya. And then, together, pwede nyo ilagay or i-drop no? yung inyong mga offering sa isang lugar lang para naiipon po natin every, every Sunday. Let's pray. Lord, may continue to honor Panginoon yung aming uh, uh, giving. And uh, the way we give, Lord, would start from our hearts. It starts from our heart, Panginoon, on how we value yung pagbibigay sa inyo. On how we value, Panginoon, yung kabutihan mo, yung blessings na binibigay mo sa amin. Because it shows kung paano kami magbigay sa iyo. Lord, the more you um, show us, Panginoon, yung na, na nasa amin, Panginoon, ang uh, kapangyarihan, no, ang uh, uh, willingness namin to grow more in the area of giving. Alam ko na kasama dito yung aming faith sa inyo, yung aming pag-grow sa inyo, Panginoon. So, may continue to bless all of us as we give today. Yung mga families na nandun sa bahay nila, as they give, ever amount it is, Panginoon, alam ko na binibigyan nila to out of a cheerful, out of a generous heart for you. It is a prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give unto the Lord. Good morning, Impact Church. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. <laughs> Ako din ay nagsiselebrate ang Father's Day for the first time. Uh, at ngayon ko lang nalaman na ibang iba pala talaga yung pagiging ama. Hindi mo siya may experience sa ibang mga naranasan na, mo na sa buhay mo dati. It's a new experience for me and I'm just so thankful to the Lord for allowing me to be a father. Napakalaki ng pasasalamat ko sa kanya. Ibang iba yung pakiramdam na mahawakan mo yung baby mo for the first time. Yung thought that comes to my mind is, wow, this life, I am part of the creation of this baby. The Lord allowed me to uh, rear a child. At alam ko, uh, inalaw na yun because He will also provide the means, the uh, resources, uh, the will, the strength, emotional, spiritual, 
And uh, physical uh, strength na kailangan ko para maging isang mabuting ama. And it only happens with the grace of our Lord. That's why every day I pray for myself so that I may be a good father to my daughter, also a good husband to my wife. I thank God every day na ako din ay naka-experience ng uh, magandang model ng isang father because of my father. And with that, I want to honor my father, si Rainier Heredura. Dad, I thank you because of you. I saw what it really means to be a good father. And my only dream and my hope, my prayer is that I would be uh, like you as a father. Thank you for your great modeling. Salamat din sa Diyos at inalaw ka niya maging mabuting ama sa iyong mga anak. I know na hindi yun madali para sa inyo, but I know it's only because of the grace of the Lord. Ganun din po sa lahat ng ama dyan. You are a blessing to all of us. So mga anak, mga asawa, mga wives, if you are with your husband right now, kung hindi man, text niyo po sila na happy Father's Day and appreciate them. Dad, I love you. Thank you for everything that you have done for us. Uh, before we go on uh, with our message today, let's just offer a word of prayer to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we know that you are the one who uh, gathered us together to hear your word today. My prayer is that you will just uh, feed our hearts and our minds and that we may live our lives according to your call and your design for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, we will talk about a man na uh, I'm sure kilalang kilala na ninyo. Uh, Kalulululuhan niya, si Noah. Si Noah ay nagkaroon ng anak. Ang pangalan niya si Shen. Si Shen nagkaroon ng anak. Si Arfaxar. Arfaxar nagkaroon ng anak. Si Shela. Si Shela, anak niya si Eber. Eber Bartolome, dito pala kay Noah yun. Si Eber, anak niya si Peleg. Si Peleg, anak niya si Reyu, hindi yung sa Street Fighter. Si Reyu, anak niya si Nahor. Si Nahor, anak niya si Tera, hindi yung bagong sasakyan ng Nisan. Si Tera, anak niya si Abraham. And today, we will talk about Abraham. Pero sino ba talaga si Abraham? Lagi natin siya na narinig, no? Si Abraham, when God called Abraham, he was 75 years old. At si Abraham ay naninirahan sa isang syudad na ang pangalan ay Ur. Uh, ang Ur ay isang powerful na city sa loob ng isang napaka-powerful din na nation na ang tawag ay Mesopotamia. Ang Ur ay culturally, economically, politically advanced na syudad. No? When the rest of the world was settled in small villages, small towns, ang Ur ay napakalaking syudad na. Ito po yung mga archaeological na mga reconstruction ng kung ano ang itsura ng Ur ng panahon ni Abraham. Yan. Uh, ako kasi yung thought ko dati, akala ko nung tinawag ng Diyos si Abraham galing sa Ur, tinawag niya siya galing sa lugar na ma-disyerto, na wala pang malaking ekonomiya, yung pala hindi. When Abraham was called by God, he was being taken from a place of great wealth. No, napakaganda nitong lugar na ito nung panahon nila. Talagang center of civilization at that time. No? But let's get to know Abraham a little more. We will study his life and divide it into three parts. The first part uh, is the call of Abraham. Basahin natin siya. Genesis 12, 1 to 7 says, The Lord had said to Abraham, at this time, ang pangalan pa ni Abraham ay Abraham. Mamaya po makikita natin kung bakit nagbago at ano ang significance. So, ibig sabihin ng mga pangalan na yun. The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make a, your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Yeah. Uh, so Abraham went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran. 
and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they have and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. So we will study that part of Abraham's life. So Abraham was 75 years old. Kung 75, kung hindi itong adventure na to, na Abraham, umalis ka dyan kung saan ka lumaki at tatawagin kita papunta sa isang lugar na hindi pamilyar sa iyo. That's a, uh, an adventure para sa bata siguro, mas bata-bata ka ng tao. Kung nyari, edad ko, or kahit sabihin mo, middle age, magandang adventure pa rin ito. Pero kung ito ay calling na ibibigay sa isang 75-year-old man, nakahalos kasi edad niya lang din yung asawa niya. Mas bata lang din ang konti. So you're talking about matagal ng mga senior citizen ng mga individuals, but they were called by God to uproot everything na meron na sila, lahat ng nabundan nila, the Lord commanded them to take everything. Leave your comfort zone, leave your home, leave your country, and I will show you a land. Grabe yung uh, hihihi ni Lord sa kanya. No? Pagpunta sa isang land na walang promise, at least sa perspective niya, hindi niya pa alam eh. at least sa perspective ng tao, hindi obvious sa tao. Canaan is 5,500 kilometers from Ur. <laughs> Imagine mo yun. Binyahin ni Abraham by foot or by camel or by donkey. But even then, kahit may sakyan ka pa, 5,500 kilometers, it's a long journey. Imagine mo, ang Baguio is what? 300 kilometers or more. Uh, it's a, it's still a long journey and pagdating mo sa Baguio masakit pa din yung katawan mo kahit na nakakotsi ka na eh kahit na naka 200 horsepower ka pa na sasakyan uh, it's a long journey at nakakapagod yung journey na yun ito pa kaya na ang tanda-tanda na ni Abram at ang binyahe niya ay 5,500 kilometers wow, grabe yun you know, sacrifice. You can call that sacrifice. And not only God, that God promised that He would be a great nation. He didn't promise na kay Abraham. God promised that Canaanite would be inherited by His offspring. Now, that's a great promise. Sobrang ganda ng promise na yun, pero then, maliit na issue. Maliit na issue. Abraham was already 75 years old. At si Sarai, senior citizen na rin. At kung ano yung standard natin ng kaya mag-bear ng child at, uh, at, 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 at a certain age, uh, 30, 35, uh, for even 40, yan yung tinatawag na late na ng mga pregnancy, no? At sinasabi ng mga doctors, at risk na yan. So kapag lumampas ka ng 50, lalo na kapag lumampas ka ng 60, that's quite impossible na. And Sarai knew that. Alam niya yun, nung time na yun. Mamaya makikita natin kung ano yung sasabihin ni Sarai nung finally nangyari na yun sa kanya, no? So it was a great promise given to a couple, Abraham and Sarah, it just did not make any sense at that time. It did not. But we only need to read beyond this chapter, chapter 12 of Genesis, to see that Abraham's life, at this time, Abraham, is full of miracles after miracle after miracle, just because he chose to give glory to God by obeying Him. It did not make sense to Him, no. But He just obeyed God. Dahil yun ang sinabi ng Diyos. So, God changed Abraham to Abraham because Abraham meant 
a revered father dahil kilala na nga si Abraham and people respected him ang pangalan niya ay Abraham but when God chose him to be a father of nations his name became exactly that Abraham it means father of nations at the time Abraham had no idea how that would happen wala siyang ka-idea kung paano mangyayari yun Basta sa kanya, inutusan siya ng Diyos and he will follow the Lord even if it does not make any sense. Now, what lesson can we draw from that? Is this. Lesson number one. God calls us to unfamiliar, uncomfortable territories for His glory. We cannot think that yung mga challenges na ibibigay ng Panginoon ay mga challenges na kaya lang natin. Meron tayong famous na kasabihan, hindi yan ipapagawa ng Diyos sa iyo kung hindi mo kaya. Well, that's not totally accurate. The Lord gives things, uh, challenges to His children. Things na hindi nila na-imagine na gagawin nila. Things na hindi talaga nila kaya physically. Because they're never really meant to do it by themselves. The Lord is with them. At yun yung nakita at in this call ng mga grams sa mga kain niya. Okay? Let's go to part 2. Part 2 we will take from Genesis chapter 21 verses 1 to uh, 13. No? Ito ay yung birth ni Isaac. Si Isaac yung anak ni Abraham tsaka ni Sarah. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time, God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, Who would have said to Abraham and Sarah would nurse children? <laughs> Yet I have born him a son in his old age. The child grew and was weaned. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had born to Abraham was mocking and he said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. And the matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son, but God said to him, Do not be distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you. Because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. So the story is this. See Abraham, Abraham, uh, nung binigyan siya ng promise ni Lord, nagtakang nga siya kung paano mangyayari yun. At umabot din si Abraham sa point na sobrang nagdududa na siya sa promise or he thought that he must act in his own capacity para mangyari yung promise ng Panginoon na imposible. So what Abraham did was take a woman na slave nila Si Hagar, who was an Egyptian, uh, with her, ang karoon ng anak si Abraham. Ishmael, the child's name, was Ishmael. Now, nung pinanganak finally si Isa, may wisdom na nung fall sa mind ni Sarah. Sabi ni Sarah, uh, kailangan namin paalisin yung anak na yan. And Abraham was, ano siya, torn siya kasi anak niya rin naman si Ishmael. Pero ang sinabi ng Diyos sa kanya, sundin mo kung ano yung sinabi sa iyo ni Sarah. Sundin mo siya. Ama, sundin mo yung asawa mo. 
Kasi happy wife, happy life. Alam sa ni Abraham yung mga dati. Tunay na yung nasa kanya ni Dan. And God said na huwag kang mag-alala sa anak mo si Ishmael. Because he is your son. Whatever I promise you, he will be the post also. He will also be a great nation dahil anak mo siya. At yan ang promise ko sa'yo. Now, so there is this book. It's called Worlds at War. The 2,500 year struggle between East and West. Authored by Anthony Pagnan. Itong libro na to ay kinikwento kung ano yung mga conflicts na nangyari between the Western world and the Eastern world. Pag sinabi natin Eastern world, nandiyan ang uh, Middle East. When uh, this book says West, ito yung Europe. So that is Greek. That is the Romans. That is the rest of Europe. Uh, the Spaniards kung saan pumangkot si Paul, kung uh, sa kanyang mga missionary journey. Uh, and this book records a long battle between Christian believers and the Muslims. Ang minuno po ng mga Muslims ay si Ishmael. The reason why the second largest group of uh, belief or uh, religion. Ayoko sa akin gamitin yung term na religion. Anyway, for the sake of this conversation or uh, anyway, for the sake of this uh, sermon, sabihin na natin na gano'n. The second largest is Muslims. The first is Christianity. And for thousands of years, we have been in conflict. Uh, never naman tayo binigyan ng utos ng Panginoon ng God na girahin ang mga Muslim. We were never ordered or commanded by God to be at war with the Muslims, to harm them in any way. But somehow, dahil sa maling pag-intindi at mga perverted na ideas tungkol sa ginagawa ng simbahan dati, sa mga pagkakabalik ng mga heads ng simbahan dati, ay uh, yun ang nangyari. And until now, we feel the tension between Christianity and the Muslims. And you know what? Itong dalawang kaya mga kasang Muslims kasi Promise to be God eh. Well, hindi dapat tayo nagugula kung bakit malaki at malakas at mayayaman ang mga Muslim nations. Because as God promised Israel that they would be a great nation, God also gave that same promise to Israel and his descendants. Now, you and me, ano ba ang treatment natin dapat sa mga Muslim brothers natin? Is it Christian to hate them? Is it Christian to belittle them in any way? Is it Christian to be at war with them? To have enmity between us? No. No. The Lord is not pleased. The Lord is not pleased that we regard them any less than how we regard ourselves. Just because they believe in the pero anyway, hindi you know what? Itong bagay na ito ay pwede sa maiwasan. The Muslims came from Ishmael and Ishmael was born because they were having thought wrong about how he should act with what he wrote. The vision that he has given him. Nakala niya itong unbelievable na vision na kumahan na ibinigay ng Panginoon sa kanya ay matatamas niya o makakabit niya sa pamamagitan ng lakas niya, ng karunungan niya at ng kakayanan niya. He was so wrong. He was so wrong. And there are so many times sa buhay natin ng mga Christian na ganun tayo. Pinangungunahan natin ng Jesus dahil hindi tayo, hindi natin nakikita kung paano nangyayari 
Ito po sa mission. Ibigay sa atin. That's why we're always tired. That's why we run around in circles. And at the end of the day, uh, ang lit pa na ang nagawa natin para sa napakalaking vision na pinapagawa sa atin ng Panginoon. Hindi ko sinasabi na hindi dapat tayo makto doon sa mga pinapagawa ng Panginoon. No, that's not the point. There are just things that are simply outside our control. That the Lord does not even expect us to uh, conquer by ourselves. So the second lesson is this. When God tells us to do the extraordinary, He also calls us to stand in awe and marvel at what He can do and not be underwhelmed by the best of what we can do. Dito yan eh. Pagod na pagod na tayo sa dami na ginagawa natin. At the end of the day, parang hindi pa natin nakakalahat eh. O hindi man lang natin na nababawasan ng kaunti. Yung vision na malaki na pinapagawa sa atin ng Panginoon. Dahil nag-focus tayo dun sa kaya natin gawin. Nag-focus tayo dun sa kaya natin gawaan ng paraan. When in fact, we were supposed to wait for the Lord and watch as things unfold. Hindi dahil kaya natin. Hindi dahil kinakaya natin. That's not the point. <laughs> That's not the point of a great vision from the Lord. The point is that there's a great vision that is given to you and wait and watch. Just act with what you can and the Lord will do something extraordinary in the midst. Iba kasi yung kapag kinaya mo ang isang bagay. And when you say that, ah, grabe itong ginawa ni Lord sa means natin, but in reality, it's something na kinaya mo lang. Sa mga hindi ka satisfied sa loob mo, you are underwhelmed. Lord, parang ang liit nito. Sabihin sa inyo, Lord, talagang maliit yan. Hindi naman kasi yun yung gusto ko para sa iyo. Hindi yan yung pinapagawa ko sa iyo. Hindi yan yung hinihintay mo. Just wait on me. Wait on the Lord. Brothers and sisters, wait on the Lord. And we will stand in awe and marvel at what He can do. His great power. Part 3. It's entitled, Abraham's Greatest Test. Yes, lahat ng hero may test. Lahat ng hero ay sinusubukan. We take the third part from Genesis 22, 1 to 18. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, Masagot ni Abraham, Here I am. He replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain. I will show you. Grabe yung pinapagawa sa kami ng Lord. Nung bata ako, talimig ko itong story na ito, hindi ako makapaniwala. You know, even as a young child, I was thinking na ganun ba sa daan? Uh, ganun ba ang ugali ng Diyos natin? He gave this beautiful gift to Abraham. And is God that God who will ask Abraham to sacrifice his son? What's happening? We will discover verse 3. Early the next morning, Abraham got, got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on the on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here. Isaac said, 
But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering of his son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on that mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Wow. What a great story. What a great story. Now let's deal with that question. You know, God is not a cruel God. In fact, dahil sa obedience ni Abraham, merong dalawang ipinakita ang Panginoon, dalawang bagay na very important na nililigil ang Panginoon tungkol sa sarili niya sa mga tao. Unang-una, nililigil niya sa tao na uh, because of the obedience of Abraham, God was able to reveal or show the distinction between false gods and himself. During this time, yung mga Diyos Diyos ang sabaligid nila ay humihingi ng birth offering, mga anak, pinapa-sacrifice, uh, cruel ang mga pinaniniwalaan nila ng Diyos. There he establishes that unlike other gods, he is not fickle, he is not cruel, he is not self-serving, he does not ask a life sacrifice of man. He simply does not ask that. If there was any sacrifice, it would not be commanded by God. Martyrdom is not commanded by God. However, it is allowed by God. There is a difference. What is the difference? The difference is that when God commands something, He expects the recipient of the command to do it. When God allows something to happen, it is not because of His desire to hurt people, it is the will of others gusto itong gawin ng ibang mga tao, fueled, malamang, or propelled by the enemy. Uh, but this is from other people that others are harmed. However, God allows that. Pinapayagan ng Panginoon yun. Because even in the mess that man makes, he has a plan to correct everything and make all things beautiful. Even for the person who does evil things, even for the person who hurts others, there is a beautiful plan for him, for his life. Iba talaga ang Diyos, no? Bakit inaalaw ni Lord na gawin itong taong to na napakasama itong bagay na ito para masaktan ang mga pababait ng tao? Hindi natin 100% alam ang kasalutan. Pero ang katotohanan lang is that God is in control and there is something beautiful that will always come out of everything. Sometimes it just goes beyond our lifetime to see. <laughs> now, one example of what I'm explaining is the Apostle Paul. Paul was 
a great part of the persecution of Christians. Christians lost their homes, their livelihood, they got separated from their family, and others even lost their lives. The first of which was Stephen, because of Paul. Yan ang ginawa ni Paul, napaka grabe. Although si Paul believed that he was doing the right thing. He believed that he was doing this for God himself. But he was just so wrong. And he was persecuting people, Christians. Was it God's desire that these Christians go through these difficulties? It was a great testimony to others who heard about their sacrifice, but was it God doing this thing? Ang Diyos ba ang gumagawa nito? The answer is no! Hindi ang Diyos ang rason kung bakit nahihirapan itong mga tao nito. This is evidenced by Acts 9 verse 4. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. Hindi desire ng Panginoon na masaktan tayo. But he does allow it. Because he has a great purpose for these things. So is it God? Or does he desire that you and I get hurt? No. But even when we do get hurt in the process, that does not mean that I'm just, that God does not work in the background. That God is not doing anything. Yes, he is. He's working in the background. He's working to make things beautiful. We just need to trust him. And obey him. It might not end up the way that we imagine it to be, but it will always be better and will give more glory to God. That's the point. It will give more glory to God. And that's the reason why it's better. It's not because it's more convenient to us, not because it's more favorable to us, no. Because it gives more glory to God. The second thing that it teaches your obedience to Abraham, God made it clear that if there will be a life sacrifice, the only one that would suffice is that which comes from Him. Hindi tayo. Yung sacrifice natin, of yung life sacrifice natin, hindi enough. Even yung giving natin, ay hindi enough. Yung sacrifice natin, hindi enough. It's only because of Him that these sacrifices become accepted. So in matters of salvation, it is very simple. Bakit tayo nasisave from hell? It's because the sacrifice, you think ako at ikaw, we cannot do anything to save ourselves. To save ourselves. Kahit ako pa yung pinakamabahit na tao sa buong mundo, hindi ko kaya isave ang sarili ko from hell. No, it's not about morality. Hindi yun ang punto. The only thing that can save us is the sacrifice of so a perfect being. And that is God Himself in the person of Jesus Christ. So that's very clear. No? Hindi tao ang makakapagbigay ng sakripisyo para mabigyan ng salvation ang sarili niya. Ang nakakapagbigay lamang ng salvation ay si Jesus mismo. His only son, God's only son. Now, in matters of service or Christian living, that is if a person is already saved, it gets a little bit complicated. Hindi dahil yung biblio, tinutukoy ng Panginoon ay komplikado, kundi dahil ang tao sometimes justifies his actions or his thoughts to a point that things get very complicated. But the Bible, that's not teaching that way. Very simple niya actually. We just make it complicated as men. Sacrifice is something so great, it hurts you when you give it. That's what sacrifice is. It is this way because it is never really a matter of whether you can give it or not. It's a matter of how involved 
God is or God was in your act of giving. It is His strength that allows you to give something that you cannot give. It is His providence that allows you to live or enjoy life even after you have given what you have given. So what is something that you cannot give? Maybe it's something that you do not have. Maybe it's something that goes beyond your courage to do. Kasi ang sacrifice hindi lang yung binibigay mo. Sometimes the Lord asks us to sacrifice our time, sometimes our effort. Is it something that you are definitely uncomfortable giving up? A sacrifice is like that. How can a person make a sacrifice? Well, kung ganun kahirap pala ang sacrifice, o paano nakakapag-sacrifice ng tao? Diba? Marami na mong taong nagsasacrifice eh. Marami examples niyan. Uh, we have a Mother Teresa, if you know her. Mother Teresa lived among the poor. It was not something that a normal person would easily give. It was it's not something that a normal person would think about one day na I will give up everything and bring to the poor in debt. Because that's the point. Even Mother Teresa could not do it, but it is because of the strength, it's because of the wisdom, it's because of the compelling power of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ that allowed Mother Teresa to live that way. How can a person give or make a sacrifice? The will comes from God. The confidence comes from God. The comfort comes from God. The object comes from God. Because what do we have that wasn't given by God in the first place? So just no man lahat to him. He will provide a true sacrifice that pleases God. Is one that is called by God, subjected to God, made possible by God. Yan ang sacrifice. A good example of sacrifice is in our giving. In yung pinaka simple na pwede natin makita in our reality, in our time. Well, when we give, we cannot boast about it. Ano ba ang standard ng Lord when we give or when we help others? Uh, the Lord said in Matthew 6, 1 to 4, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Wala na silang reward. Yun na yun. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When you give, Kahit gano'ng sacrifice yan sa'yo. <coughs> Kahit gano'ng sacrifice yan sa pananaw mo. The Lord is not pleased if when you give, you announce it. No? You can be the most generous person in the world. And when you post that in Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, no? <laughs> Read this verse. I do not have to tell you that you are doing it wrong. The Lord Jesus already said it clear. This is one example of what I'm saying, that sometimes we make things very complicated because we justify and justify and justify things when the Lord simply stated it very clearly. So going back to Abraham, the third lesson is this. When God calls us to take a leap of faith, that's the sacrifice, 
something uncomfortable, something na hindi mo pa nagagawa, something you think you do not have skills for. When God asks you to take a leap of faith, He provides. He provides the wisdom. He provides the will. He provides the strength. He provides the courage. He provides the resources. Lahat. Sa kanya manggaling. We have a great God, a loving God, a wonderful God. Wow. Let's just review the lessons that we had today. God calls us to unfamiliar, uncomfortable territories for His glory. The second is, when God calls us to do the extraordinary, He also calls us to stand in awe and marvel at what He can do and not be underwhelmed by the best of what we can do. And finally, the third is that when God calls us to take a leap of faith, He provides. Fathers, let me just speak to you quickly, man to man. The world, our world, does not need great man. No. The world needs men who are made great by their love, their obedience of God. The world needs men of conviction. The Lord needs unwavering dedication to the truth and what is right, as said in the Bible clearly. The world needs godly men. Ang tanong ko sa'yo, bilang ama, will you heed God's call? Sasagot ka ba sa kanya? Even if it means you have to leave your comfort zone, will you follow Him? Even when the frontier is without promise, as you perceive, even sometimes God only knows where you're going, what you're going to do, will you follow? Will you, above all, listen to the voice of God? I tell you the truth, if we only live that way, the world, as we know it, would be such a beautiful Lovely word. Before I close in prayer, I would just like to take this time to tell you that I have decided to follow such a God. July 11 is my last day as your pastor at Impact Church. It was not an easy decision to make. Uh, it was a product of much prayer which started last year. It was incredibly difficult to talk to the leaders about it, especially that the Lord made it clear that when I do communicate this meeting, I will be fully honest with everything, absolutely everything. So, with the blessing of the core and my co-pastors, I humbly take my leave. You have my gratitude. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. I know that you have been praying for us as pastors, and I thank you for that. You will always have my love and support in that family. Wherever the Lord leads me, my wife, JC, and our daughter, Symphony. As I have told some of you already, I am just a message away. I will forever be accessible to you if you need me. I am saddened in my heart, but I know that the Lord, I need simply to follow the Lord, even if the frontier does not offer promises. I just need to follow Him. Let's pray in back. Let's pray in church. Let's pray in family. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We know, Lord, that this world needs fathers who are godly, who would stand for truth, who would fight injustice, who would obey your voice and your leading. And I pray, Lord, for every single father, grandfather, even spiritual fathers, 
Lord. I pray for wisdom and guidance in their lives. I pray that you continually lead them, Lord, to the path that you want for them. For the rest of the impact church, Lord. We thank you that you have created this family in the middle of Kubao. Alam ko, Lord, na mayroong rasong kung bakit mo pinagbuklod-buklod itong mga tao nito. And I know that your plan for this church is great, O Lord. I pray, Lord, that, that like Abraham, we would obey and follow you even when it simply does not make sense. Even if sometimes it seems illogical. Continue to remind us that whatever you call us to, you will provide the strength, you will provide the wisdom, you will provide the will, the courage, and the resources that you need will be needed to obey your name. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church.
with it. But we know that wherever the Lord is leading you, like that of Abraham, He will bless you and He will guide you all the way. Let us pray, church. Lord, we thank you for you are a good, good Father. We thank you that you are the Lord, the Father of the church. Lord, we thank you that you are the source of comfort, of peace, of peace and of love. We thank you that in you we can stay strong, we can stand in strong foundation for you have ordained our days you have placed us where you want us to be to fulfill the purpose that you have given to us Lord as we continue to brace this uncertainties in our lives as a nation as a church, as individuals, I pray that your peace that passes all understanding be upon each one. I pray, O oh God, that to those who are heavily burdened, Lord, would you let them come to Jesus for his burden, his light. Allow them, Father, to feel your grace. Allow them, Father, to see how good you are. Lord, as we face the virus, the sickness, we face it, Lord, with cautiousness, but we face it also, Father, with the knowledge that you are our great protector, that you are our great healer, and that you will allow us to meet once more Enjoy the presence of one each other. Lord, we are grateful to you for how you have brought Impact Church into this situation, into new heights, into greater heights, oh God. Lord, I pray for each member. May your blessings be upon them. I pray that your strength be with them every day. Your spiritual strength be with them. We pray for the leaders, that you bless them as well. We thank you even for Diamond Arcade and how they are blessing the church. And we pray that your blessings be upon this institution as well. Brothers and sisters, receive the blessings from the Almighty Father. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority, both now and forevermore. Amen and Amen. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone.